All right, welcome to module two of our course on what the heck this uh, Corporate Transparency Act is and how it's going to affect us small business owners and private investors. So in this uh, uh, module, we're going to talk about all the reporting requirements, and there's a lot of them. And as I'm going to, this is going to be a theme throughout this course. A lot of landmines there that we need to be aware of, but in this module, I'm just going to go over the bare the bare bones of this, how this works, and we'll get into the details a little bit later in future modules. So it's broken down into two categories, a domestic reporting company and a foreign uh, reporting company. So reporting company means, hey, you, you have to, you have to uh, get into that whole swamp of the uh, registration with the Corporate Transparency Act. So there are three key questions that you have to answer when you're asking, you know, you're deciding whether you're a reporting company or not for domestic. The first one is, is it a corporation? If it is, you got to report. Second question, is it an LLC, a limited liability company? If it is, have to report, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And three, which is an interesting question, which you know, we'll get into later about why this is so important, is was the entity created by a filing of a, a doc, registration document with a secretary of state of any state, you know, division corporations, you know, is it required to file an annual report, so on and so forth. If yes, that is a reporting company. Now, if it's not, if it if the entity was was created by, uh, you know, uh, on its own without having to register with a secretary of state of any state or similar document, even you know, in the state or Indian reservation, then it is not a reporting company. Keep that in mind. It's going to be very, very important. On the foreign reporting side, it's just a foreign company that has to register with the Secretary of State of any state or you know, Indian reservation to be allowed to do business inside the United States. Uh, now, there's a whole list of exempt companies. There's 23 of them. So I will just go over them really brief, briefly. Any kind of government uh, authority, banks, of course they are, credit unions, depository holding companies, money services businesses, security brokers and dealers, uh, investment companies, investment advisors, insurance companies, venture capitalist fund, uh, accounting firms, uh, public utilities, and, and pooled investments, any company that has uh, generates gross revenues above $5 million and has 20 plus full-time US-based employees, uh, any tax exempt uh, entities, uh, inactive entities, W-2s, sole proprietors, those are all exempt from having to register with the Corporate Transparency Act. Now, if you have 25% or more interest, what they call control or ownership in any entity, then you have to register. And there can be you know, no limit on the amount of you know, people that have to submit their information as far as ownership, as long as it's above 25%. Uh, there's also a category called, you know, substantial control. And so, you know, this is where it gets a little bit murky, but, you know, on the, first of all, any senior officer. So if you've got a, you know, a president of a company, CFO, which is a, you know, chief finan uh, financial officer, uh, a general counsel, uh, you know, a, a, uh, Chief uh, Operating Officer, COO, or CEO, right? Uh, Chief Executive Officer, you have to report. Um, if you have the authority in the company to appoint or remove officers, no matter what your title, you got to report. If you're a quote unquote, in, you know, in, uh, <laughs> important decision maker, then you got to report. And what does that mean? And this is where it gets a little murky. It's like, well, do you influence decisions having to do with? The company? Are you involved in the finances of the company? Uh, do you, are you involved in sale, lease, or mortgage or transfer of any corporate assets? Um, if you have any influence on expenditures or investments in the company, if you, even if you're someone that's involved in doing amendments or um, changes to procedure of corporate documents, policies, and so on and so forth, then you're considered a beneficial owner. Uh, and then they have this, again, very vague category of uh, substantial control. And they don't come out and tell you that, okay? The government will decide if someone is has uh, uh, substantial con uh, control. They decide it, and they'll decide also determine if you 
was if that was a willful omission. And that gets into some pretty heavy uh, fines and or criminal prosecution. So and remember, in this entire landscape of the Corporate Transparency Act, you because it's under the money laundering statutes, you are guilty until you prove your innocence. That's the new reality we're living in here. And we'll give that later modules, but just keep that in mind as we go through this, okay? So um, if, uh, we'll talk about ownership interest. So that's determined by whether you have any equity, any stock, or any voting rights. Uh, and if you, again, if you have any percentage, you know, what's the percentage of your asset ownership, 25% or more. Uh, and if you have an option, if you have any options that have to do with the company, that's considered a beneficial ownership and you have to uh, register with that. Again, that's getting a little murky here. Some people have options for a certain period of time. You know, how are you going to get them to comply? Because they got to comply as well. Uh, there's another one that's very interesting. It's called an applicant. So, and this is just the absurdity of government stuff here. So, um, so if you if you uh, formed your company before January 1st, 2024, then you are not required to submit any applicant information. If you start a company after January 1st, 2024, then the person that created the uh, or, or filed the um, corporate paperwork to register has to register. And not just that person, it's anybody who supervises that person who does that, right? And that could be anybody. It could be um, it could be an attorney, it could be a, a, a CPA, an accountant, a spouse, right? <laughs> Again, murky. I mean, who who determines the level of of supervision? Well, they all have to be have to be have to report. Okay, so all they they are uh, considered in the classification of a beneficial owner, and they have to report. So let's talk about the reporting. So on the company side. This is the documentation that needs to be submitted. You got to have your full, the full name of the company, uh, any DBAs, you know, doing business as. You got to have the complete U.S. address, any you know, any trademarks, any copyrights, uh, any business registration, tax ID numbers, and then of course you have to submit all of the identifi identifying information for every single business owner and that, and that we just listed here. And so now if you're a business owner or a beneficial owner, you're considered in one of those you know categories that we just went over, then you got to put your full legal name, your date of birth, social, um, you know, your current residential address, which just makes steam come out of my ears when you think about that what the frick do they have the right to know where you know i i have to register with with my personal address every single time uh and then whatever document you choose could be a state id could be a, a driver's license could be a passport you got to provide the number and you got to have a photocopy an image of it to be sent in or get a fence and identifier identifying number which we'll talk about later um so that's all that paperwork that has to be submitted uh if you um, if you if a company exists before January first, two thousand twenty four, then you have a year's leeway to get all this stuff done. Uh, if you form it after January first, two thousand twenty four, then you have well, they, the law says thirty days, but they're giving as of right now, they're giving an additional ninety days to report. That will go back and forth, so you got to be careful about that because that's where they'll catch you is if you don't keep up with that, and then you think you had ninety days, you actually only thirty days, then you're not in compliance. Uh, and what I I sarcastically say love about this, which I actually hate, is that if any if there's any changes that go on, uh, then you have 30 calendar days to respond. Uh, like you get, like for example, if you get a new DBA or something, or there's a, some kind of change in a beneficial owner. And if there's any change in the owner's name, address, or unique number, like a passport, a driver's license, or whatever. Uh, and this is really kills me. So think about this, okay? Every time you move, Anytime one of your reporting people, your beneficial owners moves or gets married, if it's a, let's say if it's a woman who gets married and, and takes on her husband's name or vice versa, however way things happen now in today's society, then that has to be updated. So you're going to have to get into your beneficial owner's personal lives and make sure that you know something happens in their life that really is nobody's business. It's now the company's business and it's now the government's business. OK, that's what's coming, folks. And then, of course, if you change, if your company changes to an exempt status, one of those 25 uh, 
24 or 25 exempt categories that I listed earlier in this module, then you have to uh, um, report this to FinCEN. So whew, that's a lot of stuff, right? That's a lot of stuff and none of it's good. So we'll go over, you know, we'll go to the next module here and we'll continue our deep dive into the swamp of the Corporate Transparency Act. I'll see you then.